All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about how you can use your TI Inspire cast to solve some Lagrange multipliers problems. Um, and so let's just get started. Uh, I'm gonna add a calculator page. And uh, first thing I wanna do is I'm going to define um, F and G. So F is the function we're gonna optimize and G is the constraint curve. And so I'm actually just gonna use the problems that are in uh, the videos that I did by hand, just because I have those handy. So uh, F of X, Y and then colon equals, which is control templates, um, x times, not optional, you have to put the multiplication there, x times y, press enter, and then g of x comma y, colon equals, um, 4x squared plus 8y squared, oh my gosh, 8y squared minus 16, and then I, so I, it's actually really important to move the 16 over, um, in this case, so I'm gonna have, the original constraint is 4x squared plus 8y squared equals 16, but I moved it over, um, and then one of the equations I'm gonna enter is g of xy equals zero. Um, okay, so we have this, and now what we wanna do is set up a system to solve. So, excuse me, I think the easiest way to do this is um, to use menu three, seven, so that's menu, algebra, solve system of equations, and I'm gonna press enter. And then this is gonna be three equations in three unknowns. So I'm gonna say three. My variables are not gonna be x, y, z. They're actually gonna be x, y. And I use k for lambda when I'm doing it on the calculator. I don't have a really good reason for that. I just started doing it years ago and I've always done it. Um, so x, y, k. The first thing we wanna do is um, we want the partial x equals lambda partial x, right? So. Uh, I'm actually going to use the template, but instead of this, so there's a shortcut, you can press shift and minus, um, but I'm going to do this a lot. So I'm just going to get the template for a derivative. And then every time I press that button, it'll just kind of like be there. So uh, the so partial X of um, F of X, Y has to equal Lambda, which I'm calling K times, that's not optional, G of X, Y. Uh, nope, sorry, the derivative. Oh boy. All right, so templates, derivative with respect to x of g of xy. I don't know if you can hear it, my neighbor is chainsawing a tree right now. Um, so I apologize if we're picking that up. If you're on the handheld, I think the easiest thing for you to do at this point, I can't do it for some reason, um, would be to highlight this. So I'm holding shift and pressing to the left and then paste it. So control C, literally control up here, and then C, control C, control V, and paste it down there, um, and then just change things. But I, for some reason, can't use that. So I'm gonna have to type it. So partial Y, F of X, Y, equals K times partial Y, or the derivative with respect to Y of G of X, Y. Okay, so that's, um, basically, that's the gradient of f equals the lambda times the gradient of g. And then uh, I also have to solve g of x, y is equal to zero. So when I press enter, I'm gonna get x, y, and k. So I'm actually gonna know the values of lambda. Usually you don't really know the value of lambda while you're doing this, in my experience, based on the way that I do it. Um, so I got a bunch of answers. So I got negative uh, root two, negative one, and then I know what lambda is, but I don't really care negative root two, and positive one, uh, positive root two, negative one, and then positive root two, positive one. Um, so I got all those values. So now what I wanna do is I wanna check the constraint function at those values. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna type f of um, x comma y. I'm gonna do control and then equals and choose such that. And now I'm gonna go up here and I'm holding shift as I press to the right, and I'm press enter to paste it down um, and evaluate, I get root two. And then, so now you, you have a choice. You can like keep going or you can just kind of modify this. Um, and then there's this one. At this point, it's up to you uh, how you wanna go about doing these. But you can see that the absolute maximum is root two, the absolute minimum is negative root two. All right, so I'm gonna do Another problem, which is from the second video that I did, just to show you the same process, 
Uh, what's nice about this is because of the way that we define some things, uh, all I really need to do is redefine uh, F and G, and then I can copy and paste this. So I'm gonna do that, F of XY colon equals four uh, X cubed plus Y squared G of XY. So the constraint curve that I'm given is two X squared plus Y squared equals one. But I'll move everything over. So two X squared plus Y squared minus one. And then one of the equations is G of XY equals zero. Um, so now what I wanna do is go up and get the system and solve that. And you can see that we get negative root two over two, zero. We get uh, zero, negative one. We get zero, positive one. We get one third negative root seven over three. Uh, one third positive root seven over three. I don't really know what order it puts these in. I guess maybe uh, from least to greatest for X. I guess that's probably the order that it's putting it in. Um, okay, so I have all these ordered pairs and then what I would do is I would take them and I would substitute those in. You might actually have to like hand write all of these just to keep track of them, um, but the calculator did the work. So what about if we had um, three variables? So if we have three variables, we can do basically the same thing, but we do need to modify it. So what I'm gonna do is just put in a new problem and then I will do that. All right, so my problem here, f of x, y, z colon equals three x plus six y plus two z. G of x, y, z colon equals two x squared plus four y squared plus z squared minus 70. And so I'm moving everything over so I can just set g of x, y, z equal to zero in my system. Okay, and now I need to solve a system. So it's menu three, option seven. Uh, there's actually gonna be, so if there are three variables and one constraint, you're going to get uh, four equations in four unknowns and the unknowns are X, Y, Z. And then I use K for Lambda. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's kind of like bash this out here. Partial X of X, F of X, Y, Z is K times partial X of G of X, Y, Z. I'm so jealous that you can just copy and paste this. I can't. Um, partial Y, F of X, Y, Z. But then again, I can type and you can't. So, uh, I don't know. This is one, one instance where I'd rather be you, I think. Um, and now we need to add in partial Z because there's that third partial derivative equals k times partial z, g of x, y, z. And then finally, we also need g of x, y, z equals zero. And we're solving for x, y, z, and k. Enter. So I get negative three, negative three, negative four. And so that's one of the options. And three, three, four. And that's the other option. Um, all right, so I mean, that's basically it. Uh, you, you have to type this in once and then you can change F and G. Um, and I hope you found this helpful and good luck.